Why for Turbo. What is going on, everybody? This is Nick here at Why for Turbo for the Why for Turbo Hockey Talk podcast. Today is episode four. Thank you for tuning in. If you're on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube too, make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow button on SoundCloud. You can like it on YouTube. It gives us that engagement. And always feel free to comment down below or leave a review on iTunes. So thank you guys again for listening here. It's the episode four of our draft analysis from the 2017 NHL draft in Chicago, Illinois. And we're talking about Cal McCarr, Colorado Avalanche fourth overall pick, another defenseman, a uh, pretty nice year for the defensemen in the top five, two of them so far here, pretty nice. So let's get right into it, McCarr, uh, I'm just going to say McCarr because I always say Maker, Maker, you know, it's uh. It's said like three different ways on the draft coverage, so I'm just going to say Makar because I think that sounds coolest. Um, Avalanche, definitely in need of a couple prospects. Um, if you guys are not following me on YouTube, which is where a bulk of my listenership comes from, but if you are not, if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, uh, go check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Y for Turbo. We are doing a Avalanche rebuild with the NHL 17 user base or whatever it is the the game mode the gm mode um and being a gm for this team is a little difficult there's a few uh little moves we got to make things of that nature uh because you know something happened since 2013 when this team was on the rebound with mckinnon landerskog tyson berry it's uh the worst team in the league now so what happened well, there's there's a lot of things that happened, and we won't go into it too much. It is a podcast, so we have time, but, you know, losing their coach and Patrick Waugh, um, you know, this team being such a cool kind of skill-based team that took a lot of chances in the regular season and got to the playoffs and then to immediately have a coach leave of that caliber, a coach that, you know, easily – could have won coach of the year um it just doesn't sit well with the team so that's kind of my thoughts on the issue um of them not really winning anymore uh, I think it's just maybe there was a bit of a toxic environment work environment and the overall growth of the team was staggered by a change of plan you know uh how can you compete with the you know a great coach um you know, Hall of Fame coach like Wah, you know, he he was only in, what, two, two, three seasons and really did really well with this Avalanche squad. I remember them being very difficult to play with, and it was like, wow, where did this come from? Um, and, you know, I'm not an Avalanche fan, so forgive me if I'm not 100% on the whole detail of it, and I may just be ignorant to it. Um, so if you do know, let me know down in the comments below. Um, you know, I'm a Wings fan, so I can't really be an Avalanche fan. We were absolute mortal enemies, uh, you know, 15 or so years ago. Um, you know, we're more, it's more of a friendly rivalry now. McCarty's hanging out with Lemieux in the off season, things like that. Uh, at least in the last few years when he was still playing in semi-professional in AHL and things like that. But now they're, He's just doing stuff in Detroit, doing whatever he can, I guess. Hosting a few radio shows, actually, which is cool. I hear him from time to time when I'm back in the mitten, which is Michigan for you guys. Um, yeah, so let's get back into Makar. Uh, being out of the AJHL, which is the Alberta Junior Hockey League, um, pretty cool. The last highest drafted player in AJHL history was actually also by the Avalanche. So you know they got some scouts out there. It was Joe Colborn, who was selected 16th overall in the first round uh, in 2008. So that's pretty cool and kind of a throwback to that. So you definitely know that they've got some guys out here checking it out. And to pick as high as fourth, he's setting a record in the AJHL, and he'll definitely 
be one of those guys up in the Hall of Fame in that league at least. Brooks Bandits, uh, champion Brooks Bandits. So that's pretty cool. He did lead them and get the MVP for that championship role. So that is really nice on his end. Uh, next year, he is going to be playing for... Uh, he has committed to the hockey team for Massachusetts uh, Amherst. So he'll be playing at a college level, nice uh, which is pretty cool. You know, players coming out of the college game have a little more grit to them um, in some ways, for sure. So this could maybe change him from more of a offensive-minded guy to uh, be a more defensive defenseman, you know, more, maybe two-way. Uh, yeah, so we didn't go over his height and weight, 5'11", 187, so he's a little... Um, a little heavier than uh, like Hiskinen and things like that. Uh, slightly shorter, but you know he's he's right up there with like an offensive puck moving guy. Um, really, really cool that he's getting a lot of comparisons to Eric Carlson in the fact that he does move the puck so well, uh, shoots the puck really well. Um, by the way, seventy five points in fifty four games last season, if that's any indication. Now, yeah, you can say, Nick, it's the Alberta Junior Hockey League. This guy is an NHL talent. Of course he's going to be tearing up the league. Sure, but what if he wasn't? You know, then that comes into the question of, oh, okay. He got 30 points in 50 games in a league where he should be playing, you know, is like men with boys or something like that. You know, he needs to have dominated this league got me league MVP and his team to the championship game and the championship win rather series um, or there'd be some question marks so that's 24 goals by the way and that's 75 points as a defenseman that's awesome shoots the puck real well um, gets some great great assists out there as well so the avalanche needs something to build off of people are saying this guy can definitely be a franchise defenseman of the future which there's been a couple drafted and picked by the avalanche in the you know the last 10 years or so um you know i'm i'm not going to get into too much analysis of what their future is going to be like because they are a team that's got to make some decisions and who knows by the time this uh podcast comes out they may have made some moves um people are already saying you know, once they get into a certain role or maybe even next season sometime, Duchesne's going to leave, this guy's going to leave, that guy's going to leave. There's so much random thought that, you know, can pop into people's heads that makes sense. You know, it's not totally random. It does make sense, I guess. I shouldn't say it's random. Um, but, you know, when a team's doing this bad, there's got to be some shakeups. And I think if they're trying to get younger with a younger core, that is somebody, uh, you know, 26-ish years old in Duchesne that they could get out um, and get either some picks for, maybe some other prospects to help out some of these guys. But I think if you're going to invest in a long-term solution, someone who's going to be playing at the collegiate level, collegiate level for, you know, another year, and then after that they're going to come in, maybe play in the AHL for a while, that kind of thing. A slow build is probably something that's good. So this is another player in the top five that's not – going to be in the NHL first year, which is totally fine, you know, and I respect that going to, um, going to UMass. Is that, that where it is? So that's pretty cool. And I guess they had a pretty bad season last year, but there's like 11 new freshmen coming in. So it's going to be a new squad. That's the thing with collegiate athletes. You know, the turnover rate is a certain way because it's college and <laughs> you got to leave sometime. So all these freshmen coming in, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, hopefully he can build up his confidence and just dominate at that level and then come into either the AHL or NHL swinging. That would be awesome, especially for a team that I'd like to have be good again. It, it was, you know, cool to see them bring it back up, especially getting people like McKinnon, who is, you know, a great generational talent. Um, Landis Cog being the, at the time, you know, the youngest uh, captain when he was named that. So there's a lot of cool players on this team that I think in theory work really well on paper worked really well in practice it, it didn't work um but that's not their fault they're great players on their own and avalanche fans i think you got a lot to look forward to mile high city it's going to be good uh in the next couple years i mean you know i'm a detroit fan i'm right there with you 
I wish my team would just go for either a full rebuild or something. And uh, at this point, you know, it looks like we kind of are selling a lot. But, you know, you guys got a few decisions to make. But I think, honestly, there's some salvage there. And I think next year you guys could go to the playoffs if you make a couple moves. You've got the talent there. I just don't think it's working correctly for some reason. You know, um, Duchesne's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, this or that, you know. Um, or sometimes he's putting the team on his back. It, it doesn't make sense. So it's, I think it's a confidence and a coaching issue. You guys let me know, though. I'm not the biggest Avalanche fan. I've not watched a lot of them. Please let me know if I'm just totally off base and it's one thing or the other thing or a myriad of things. Just let me know. It's, it's totally cool. I, I'll admit that I'm just kind of on some ways, just from the film I've watched, from the analysis of looking at the stats, what I've come up with, it's kind of BS. It's just what I've come up with being a fan first. I'm not an analysis person. I'm not a numbers person that much. So it's just what I'm seeing. So let me know if that's what's kind of going on, because that would be um, cool if I got it right. But if I got it wrong, it'd be nice to know. That's what I'm getting the impression on. So let's get back to Makar. Uh, people are talking about him as kind of what the top five defensemen are tip, uh, top five overall players are typically supposed to be leaders on their team. They see the ice well. They move quickly. They execute They execute plays very quickly. Uh, making the read, getting the, uh, the pass to the teammate in the perfect situation, uh, high percentage plays. Every time he's out on the ice, he makes something happen. Something good happens. 75 points in 54 games. He's making something happen every single game. Multiple things happen every single game of the year. So you can see this is kind of a guy that can come in and really impact in an offensive way. Hopefully, at the collegiate level, he gets some defensive kind of points to him. Um, but this could be a future player. If they don't trade Johnson or Barry, he could maybe play on those lines. Um, I would think they would t pair him up with somebody more stay-at-home, more defensive. Uh, not really a two-way guy even, I think. I, I, I think this would be more of a... He goes hard, keeps shooting the puck, passing the puck, making the plays, and somebody kind of stays at home and holds out when he pinches, etc. Um, you know, that could change. They could just go full on attack, but I think that's worked for a lot of teams in the past. Um, I mean, look at Carlson with Mathot, that kind of thing. Um, I think that could work. So, uh, especially with him reading plays really quick, um, if he can see, oh, I'm way out of position, I got to get back there. It, it could work, you know, it, it's it's just one of those things. Um, they're saying also stick handling is really great. Puck possession is really good. Um, keeps the puck in the offensive zone for a good amount of time. Gives his team a lot of chances. Saves a lot of plays in the defensive zone. Uh, and gets the puck up the ice. So you can see there, there's a little analysis on his defensive side. If he can do that at a higher level, that'd be great. I'm not expecting that much, even though his IQ is pretty high as for actual hockey IQ, seeing the ice, playing a 200-foot game, you know, that's not 100% why they drafted him. I think it's mostly his offensive skill, his high-caliber shot, everything of that nature. Um, but the thing they're saying as well, coaches have been really praising him for being coachable, playing to his strengths in situations. Uh, this is like direct quote right here. Uh, so that to me shows, okay, Avalanche are going to play a little rough and tumble hockey. Their captain is a big bruiser dude who isn't afraid to get in the corners. If these type of players can mentor him into a certain level of play, he's going to fall into that situation and play to his strengths. He's going to fit in like a puzzle piece. He's not going to force himself to be the number one guy. He's going to work for the coaching situation that's presented to him. That's awesome. I think that's exactly what the avalanche need now they need to you know fall into a specific coach and pattern that kind of thing so i think it's nothing but upside for Makar at this point and the avalanche um you know he's just one piece but the highly coachable maturity aspect is awesome to hear uh you know hockey's a really classy game and a lot of classy players come out of it a lot of really good really good dudes come out of it and it's it's one of those things especially when they listen to their coach and things just work it is one of the best sports to watch in the world for that type of that type of thing 
and it's you know it's the best sport in the world but it's it's really cool to see because it is a very difficult sport and to be able to coach a young guy like this who's playing in college playing in a junior league getting him up to a point where he can be either a franchise or very good elite player on an NHL team just from his coaching ability, you know, because he's going to need to make defensive plays. Even Carlson makes defensive plays. You see him taking the puck uh, out of the defensive zone, making the outlet passes. These are simple things that aren't recorded on the stat sheet unless, you know, it leads to assists or something. These are, I mean, possession stats are recorded, but what I'm saying is little IQ things. You, where are you going to write that down? Like, oh, uh, you know, mark one for him seeing the ice really well. You know, these are things that, first of all, aren't 100% coachable. It's more of a situational thing and an awareness thing. Um, but, you know, you just don't track them. It's something that, that needs to just be part of the instinct of the hockey player. So hearing that is awesome. Playing to his strengths, awesome. And, I mean, the fact that they're just saying he's a potential franchise player is amazing, especially at this, uh, at this point in his career, going into college, you know. And all these players are subject to a lot of scrutiny. So, you know, seeing these, these reports from scouts and things is, is really good to hear. And you, you just want the league to get better. You want the league to be flashy and fun. But at the same time, traditional enough where there's defense played, there's stay-at-home guys that help out, and there's some flashy plays on the other end of the ice. And I think McCarr can handle this, especially being compared already to Eric Carlson. That is just a beautiful thing, and I bet he is stoked to hear that. Um, one of my last things I want to say about him, because this was slightly shorter than uh, typical episodes, I feel like it felt shorter. I haven't looked at the time, but it feels a little shorter. Um, I just think, honestly, with a lot of defensemen, it's it's one of the things that I, I like the most in the game of hockey is defense, uh, goaltenders. It's such a cool just couple positions. And being able to just outmaneuver the enemy team and being able to... Just just solve them, play chess with them, and see the ice 100% better. Use your IQ. That are That is a skill you just can't teach most of the time. So being at these maturity levels, I mean, we expect it from lottery picks, but it's awesome to talk about, and I'm really excited to see the, the future for this, this team. You know, I want them to be good. I want every team in the league to be good, and I just want the Wings to beat them. <laughs> that's, that's my thoughts on that. One last thing about Cal. He loves Spider-Man. He is good in my book. I collect Spider-Man comic books. I sold a bunch to move out to Chicago, actually. Fun fact about Y for Turbo, I moved out to Chicago, and I sold a bunch of comic books to do so, and they were all the amazing Spider-Man. I collect a ton of them. So his favorite superhero is Spider-Man. He's cool in my book. Cal McCarr is my boy. We go way back, <laughs> and I just hope for a really great season for him. Really cool to hear about um, his maturity level and his coachability, and that point total is staggering. I, I know, I know it's the league and everything like that, but you know, he he does right to to dominate in that league. He's he's going to do well if he can keep up that style of flash. So, thank you guys for sticking around and listening to us on SoundCloud, YouTube, or iTunes. Make sure to hit that subscribe or follow, whatever platform you're on. And you can always leave a comment down below, or in the case of iTunes, leave a review. Five star would be awesome. Um, it's you know just something I like to do, talk to you guys. And uh, if you're not on YouTube right now, head over to the YouTube channel. We've got a ton of cool things uh, in the video game range, also talking about the sport, and it's just hockey, 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 all day over there, Y for Turbo, uh, youtube.com slash Y for Turbo. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, go look at some uh, car highlight videos because those are going to be pretty cool. So if you're an Avalanche fan, let me know what you think about the new prospect. And everybody else, thank you for watching. We will see you next time out on the ice. <laughs>